Hello, Richie from Marmalade here. Right now we're gonna look at keyword comparison. Keyword comparison is gonna let you compare up to four keywords at a time, side by side, so you don't have to remember all the key stats and the results from one search to another. It's a great way to take all the possibilities available to you and then narrow them down to just the keywords that you wanna target for your listings, for your buyers, for your shop, so you get the sales and the views that you're looking for. All right, we're gonna cover good keywords versus bad ones, results, key stats, top tags, top items, and I have a little list of keywords for comparison because you're gonna definitely wanna to come to this with some ideas of what you wanna look at. All right, so I've pre-populated the keyword comparison with four searches already. Over on the left, you're gonna see silver jewelry. You can see there's over 50,000 results. This is the most the Etsy API that we use for search returns for us. So if you actually go to Etsy.com, you're probably going to see there's a lot more results for silver jewelry than that. But what this means to you is that that's a very big market. Okay, 50,000 plus, that's your competition. You have to compete with all those shops, all those listings. Going a little bit to the right, we see starfish jewelry. We're getting a little bit more specific. I should have mentioned that what I'm looking for here is a sterling silver starfish pendant necklace. Okay, that's what I want to list. So that's why you're seeing the silver jewelry, starfish jewelry. Anyways, 28,224. Well, that's a lot less than the 50,000 plus I was looking at. So now this looks more like a market I can compete with. I still need to drill down and see how strong the competition actually is in that market, but now we're getting to something I can work with. Silver starfish. Okay, a little bit more specific. Now we're talking materials, we're talking about shape. Okay, again, half the results of the other one. My competition is even lower. Silver starfish necklace, just 5,391 results. That is very good. I'm getting very specific, and when I'm down to the pricing component, then that's really gonna help me narrow down what my market really wants or is willing to accept when I start looking at the other listings and their sales and whatnot, as opposed to looking at it in very uh, vague terms. The best rated option I found is Constantino's market. All right. So now that we've covered results, let's talk about analyzed. Analyzed means we've analyzed 100. As default, we analyze 100 across the board for the keyword comparison. On the search page, which I'll cover next, you can analyze 42, which is the first page, or 500, which covers uh, 12 pages of Etsy search results. Below that, we have pricing. So here you can see that when I look up silver jewelry, the pricing has a big spread. Of course, because it's a very broad keyword. And as I go to the right and get more specific, that spread is reduced. And here you can see that even the averages have kind of stabilized and are more in line with what you'd think for you know, silver jewelry or silver starfish jewelry, silver starfish necklace. Below that, we have average favorites per week. Average favorites per week are a nice indication of how many views are turning into something that people want to remember. So people are click, buyers are clicking on the listing, they're hitting favorite, and what's actually going to happen is they're going to end up in their feed. So when they go into Etsy, they're going to be reminded about these, and they're also going to see other things based on what they've favorited. And this is actually really nice, and it keeps you front of mind. Um, and so other items from your shop, other items from other shops could also show up, but nonetheless, this is a great way to get you back in front of the buyer because on average it typically takes about seven times of being in front of a buyer before they will actually buy something. Average views per week. Again, this is how much traffic you can expect on average for those listings. Now, 49.5, you're going to think that's really high. Well, yeah, that kind of is because silver jewelry is very broad. So if you're on the very front page of silver jewelry, you're probably getting a lot of traffic. The downside here is it's probably not very targeted traffic. People who are just searching for silver jewelry probably aren't looking to buy right now. They're looking to browse. However, when you're looking up silver starfish, well, you probably have a really good idea of what you're looking for, and that's called buyer intent. They're looking for something because they intend to buy. And that's what you want, because you're gonna need less views to close a sale that way. Down below that, we have top tags. So I'm gonna point this out right now. There is a bug right now that 
uh, this number is showing up as a top tag. As you can see, it's only appeared once and it should not be a top tag. We are working on that bug. Um, silver jewelry, 68, sterling silver, 22. Those should be one and two and then there should be three more below it. Should look just like this one over here. All right, so here we can see starfish jewelry. Top tag is of course starfish jewelry, beach jewelry, starfish necklace, nautical jewelry, starfish. These are good ideas for me to see what's working in the top 100. So some of these might work for me. My sterling silver starfish pendant necklace, well, that falls in a nautical also, also for beach jewelry. So that's fantastic. Moving on to the right, again, I get top tags for each of those as well. Top items, this is a great way for me to see kind of a glance what the strength of those titles are and give me an idea of the strength of those listings. Of course, I'm still gonna have to look at them to really get the strength of it, right? But since the first part of that title, matching keywords and matching relevancy is so powerful, it gives me a quick idea in the top five of what those are matching. And it lets me know that I'm in the right spot. All right, so the idea here, of course, is to take a lot of keywords and start narrowing them down into the ones that I really wanna drill into and focus on those markets and figure out which ones I'm gonna to attach to my listings. Let's move on.